Make it plain. <laughs> well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are glad for you to be with us here this morning at Oak Ridge Baptist Church as we get to have a wonderful day of worship uh, today. Uh, as we, uh, as you can uh, tell from the bulletin, there is a different setup this morning. We have our adult uh, choir leading us in worship this morning with our Easter cantata. So. Uh, we're excited uh, to see uh, the result of all the hard work that they've put in over the last uh, several months preparing for uh, Easter. And so as we get started this morning, uh, I do have a couple of announcements for you. One is that if you are a guest with us, I would ask you to take just a second and find in the back of the pew in front of you right there one of our green connection cards. And if you would, take just a, a few moments and fill that out on the back side of it and uh, you can drop that into the offering plate when it comes around, uh, or you can give it to me after the service. But either way, we're excited for you to be here uh, with us today for worship, and we want you to make yourself at home uh, as we worship together today. And so uh, be sure to uh, fill out one of those connection cards if this is your first time uh, being a guest at Oak Ridge. I do want to mention to you, too, that when you came in this morning, you probably found in your seat... Uh, one of these invite cards. It says Easter on one side and then has information about the, the current sermon series that we are in. Uh, we have purchased those to hand out to our folks today so that this coming week you can take these and hand those to a friend, a family member, somebody that you know uh, that is not going to church or needs to be in church uh, and encourage them to come and worship with us this coming Sunday on Easter. And so we hope that, uh, that this will give you something tangible to hand to uh, those friends and family members, co-workers, to help them uh, be reminded about what is happening this coming Sunday uh, when it comes to worship, but also so that you can invite them uh, to join us here at Oak Ridge next Sunday morning for Easter. And so speaking of Easter, uh, we've got a lot going on this coming weekend for uh, our Easter festivities. Uh, on Saturday at 11 o'clock, we'll have our Easter egg hunt. Uh, and so hope that you'll bring your kids and grandkids out for the Easter egg hunt on Saturday at 11 o'clock. On Sunday morning at 7.30, we'll meet in here for our sunrise service. And so we'll meet at 7.30 for uh, Easter sunrise. And then at 8 o'clock, we'll enjoy a, a great meal in the uh, Family Life Center. And then Sunday school starts at 9.30 with worship at 10.30. And so I hope that you'll come and be a part of everything going on uh, this coming weekend uh, around, surrounding our Easter uh, festivities. I want to introduce you to, I'm going to ask Billy to step up here with me for just a minute. I want to introduce you to Billy Sherrill. Some of you know Billy. Uh, a lot of you do, but some of you don't. Billy is our technology or audio video uh, chairperson, and uh, they are looking for a few more volunteers to, to help with the rotation on the sound and audio and video equipment. And so if you are interested in finding out more about that or interested in uh, serving in that capacity, find Billy after the service or find me, and one of us will be able to uh, answer your questions or help you get plugged into serving in that uh, way. And so uh, Billy is usually hiding, I mean, working, uh, <laughs> working up, up at the soundboard uh, on Sunday morning. So it's, uh, it's hard to uh, get all of you to see him up there, but we do want to uh, put a, a, a name and a face together there for you. And so if you're uh, willing to serve or interested in learning more about serving on the AV team here at the church, uh, be sure to see Billy or myself after the service. And so Billy... Go back to your hiding spot. Uh, <laughs> but we do appreciate all the hard work that our AV guys put in. They do a lot for us uh, to help make worship what it is. Um, the last announcement that I have for you this morning has to do with yesterday's barbecue. We do uh, have some pans of barbecue and some uh, pounds of barbecue left over from yesterday. And so uh, once we have that uh, sold, we can give you a, a tally for uh, the barbecue, but if you are interested in buying barbecue uh, after the service, make your way to the Family Life Center. We'll have some volunteers over there that will help get you uh, taken care of for that. And uh, the, the bags of barbecue, the, the pound bags, are $5 this morning. So if you're interested in picking that up and maybe even having barbecue for lunch today, you can do that on your way out the door. The last announcement, though, uh, I do have for you is that uh, with the, the senior boxes that are mentioned in the 
uh, in the bulletin that are to be uh, distributed this week. It may be uh, the afternoon because, before they're distributed because the uh, the truck is uh, the the shipping has been delayed on that, and so uh, be sure that if you are planning to go to the food ministry to get those uh, senior boxes, be sure to listen to the phone tree this week because information will be shared about as to the time, the exact time uh, those boxes will be able to be distributed. So be sure to uh, listen to this week's phone tree for that. Uh, the last uh, thing we have to share with you this morning is the video for our Annie Armstrong Easter offering. It's one more example of how your dollars and Dimes given to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering helps to uh, minister through those church planters and missionaries here in the U.S. and in Canada. So I'm going to ask uh, Daryl if he would to share that with us at this time. Yo nací en Cali, Colombia, y en mi mente yo decía voy a saturar los Estados Unidos con cocaína, pero ya luego cuando llego acá años después conozco a Cristo y pues ahora en lugar de pensar en saturar los Estados Unidos con cocaína, eh, mi deseo es saturar los Estados Unidos con el Evangelio, empezando con esta área de Virginia. Luego de que eh, Dios me hizo el llamado y salíamos a caminar por las calles de Sterling, Casi todos se conocen, así que era muy fácil poder conocer a las personas y a medida que nos iban permitiendo, también íbamos nosotros contándoles que estábamos plantando una iglesia. Los evangelizábamos, algunos de ellos respondían positivamente y ahí empezó todo. Mi nombre es Ronnie Torres y soy entrenador personal. No puedo creer que ya llevo cuatro años de haber conocido a Jefferson. Había dejado todo en Venezuela y íbamos al gimnasio con, con frecuencia, sí. Y él con paciencia y me llevaba a la Biblia. Era el principio de mi travesía cristiana y nunca me imaginé que, que iba a estar haciendo algo así. Cuando conocí a Ronnie, mi esposa y yo estábamos empezando la plantación de la Iglesia Bíblica Campo Blanco. Tenemos muchos inmigrantes que están buscando una, un mejor futuro y alrededor de un 70% de las personas que asisten a, a nuestra iglesia han conocido a Cristo ahí y Ronnie es uno de ellos. Por tanto, los campos están blancos, listos para la cosecha y es ahí como iglesia podemos marcar la diferencia. Good morning. Morning. Obviously, I'm not my Uncle Terry, but uh, he's a little bit under the weather, so he couldn't be with us today. Um, if I could have those come forward for the offering, we're going to go ahead and do our offering this morning. Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you another beautiful day, Lord, another beautiful place to worship you. And Lord, we thank you for all many blessings, all these great people, Lord, that you have brought to your house. Lord, we thank you again for the many blessings and we pray that you will be with the ones that we have mentioned this morning that are in need of your healing hand and your loving touch and lord we pray that more people will come to know you and love you as we do now lord we pray that you will bless this offering to the ongoing of your word to bring more people to know and love you as we do we ask these things in thy gracious and holy name. Amen. If you would stand for our offertory hymn, if you prefer the hymn book, it is hymn number 146, uh, both stanzas of Oh How He Loves You and Me.
would take a few minutes to welcome each other and have a time of fellowship. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. We'll get you. Yeah, right. I'm good. How are you? Don't get I hope that show. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll land. I'm sure they heard it's me. It's going to be wonderful. It will. Oh, hell yeah. I got a little sleep, so I'm better. Hey. Mm -hmm. Good to be ignored. Hey, I know. Hey, I As our adults are making their way back towards their seats, if there's any other children, they can come forward for the children's sermon. All right. Well, good morning. It is so good to see you boys and girls and hope that you're doing well this morning. I wanted to show you something. Since I was probably a little older than some of you, I have always carried a pocket knife with me. I've, I've, I've carried a knife with me, and, and it's almost always been a knife just like that. And so I have carried one like this for so long that not too long ago, when my knife uh, finally broke and didn't work anymore, uh, Miss Misty and the boys, they ended up getting me a new knife uh, for Christmas, for a birthday or something like that. And so I got this knife and I've used it for a really long time, but guess what? My, my knife, it, it, that, it's sort of falling apart now, right? I mean... You notice that? I dropped it the other day, and I went to go pick it up, and guess what? It was in two pieces, just like that. And, and see, the really cool thing about these pocket knives are that, like, right here, they have this little thing. You can use it as a toothpick, but Pastor Nick doesn't use it as a toothpick because after that's been in my pocket a long time, I don't want to use that as a toothpick. But you know what something else is that is in here a lot of times? is a set of tweezers, but guess what? When Pastor Nick dropped it and broke it, do you see the tweezers? Yeah, know why? Because Pastor Nick don't know where the tweezers are now. Because the tweezers aren't in there. But now let me ask you. That knife right there, even though the case, the cover has come off of it, do you think I can still cut something with the blade? Yeah. Can I borrow your finger for a second? <laughs> no? Oh, okay. No, that, it don't work that way, right? But if I, were to, if I were to have a string and cut that with that knife, is the knife still going to work? It, it's sharp enough. Can you feel that right there and feel It's still sharp, right? It's sharp, and so I could use it for that. And the really cool thing is there's a, there's a screwdriver on here, and there's other things like that. And so I could still use this even though it's broken, right, even though it's messed up. Well, you know what the really cool thing is? That the Bible shows us, and we see God doing it all the time in people's lives, is that even when we're broken, even when we're messed up, God can still use us. Just like Pastor Nick can still use his pocket knife, even though it's broken and messed up, God still uses us, even when we feel like we can't be used by God, even when we think that we've, we've done too many bad things and God can't use us, or we feel like we're too far away from Him, we can still be used by Him. So as you boys and girls grow up, remember that no matter what, you, what you've done in your life, God can still use us for His glory so that He gets all the, the fame and the glory from what He does in our lives, okay? So before you boys and girls go to Children's Church, we're going to close out with prayer. So let's close our eyes, let's bow our heads, and let's pray. Father, we thank you for every one of these children. And Father, we pray that you would help them to understand as they grow up that, that you love them, that you want to uh, be in a relationship with them. And Father, that you can use them no matter 
what has gone on in their life so that you can bring glory to your name. So, Father, we pray for your blessings on these children. We pray for your blessings on their time in Children's Church. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning's cantata is called See What a Morning, and it's, it's the story of the wonderful thing that, that Jesus did for us, that God sent his son, and he died for us on that cross, but rose again, and that's what all this is about, is, is see what a glorious morning um, that that third day was. We have a narration that goes along with this. Please just pay attention to the words and worship along with us. Passover festival met Jesus at the gate, waving palms, fronds, and singing, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They had all heard stories of the miracle worker who had raised Lazarus from the dead, and I imagine religious leaders like the priest of this poem were especially eager to catch a glimpse of him. It's him, shouts bands of rich and poor, who blocked my view. I angle for a glimpse of him whose touch unlocks a blind man's sight and a deaf man's hearing. There he is, there. But what is this? No light shooting from his fingertips? His voice calls down no fire. And yet they say a fig tree withered at his word that he shattered death's door not once but thrice, calling someone's loved ones back to life, that he speaks in demons cower and perhaps he hides his power. He is, by all accounts, extraordinary. Yet I find him quite the ordinary until he turns and drinks me in. I gasp a tremble, gra grasp a palm frond, and wave it in a frenzy of praise and adoration, singing, Hosanna, 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 as if my very life
special holy day. It commemorates the night the angel of death stole all the firstborns of Egypt, but passed over every Jewish house marked with the blood of the Lamb. And it was during such a meal in Jerusalem, called the Seder, and referred to by Christians as the Last Supper, that Jesus officially assumed the role of a sacrificial lamb for all who believed him to be the promised Messiah, the Lamb of God. It was a borrowed room in which the thirteen dined. The fare was bitter herbs, unleavened bread, red wine, and lamb to mark the night. Jehovah spared his own while raining plagues on him who sat on Egypt's throne. The holy feast began accordingly with prayer, but then the Lamb of God poisoned the mood, the air, with words of blasphemy, or so they must have seen. I soon will be betrayed by one of you, said he. Shaken, the eleven men burst out. Lord, Lord is, is it, it me? me? Meanwhile, the traitor crept unnoticed from the room. His secret briefly kept the question, Who? Lord, who? 
eclipsed from Mill's End. I must leave you, said Christ. My hour is at hand. His word made each man choke, for who could swallow then? Jesus used his final Passover meal with his disciples to illustrate the unimaginable physical and spiritual sacrifice he would soon make for them and all who would believe upon his name. Using bread made from kernels of grain, pulverized beneath a heavy millstone, and wine created by a vigorous trampling and pressing of grapes, Jesus poetically demonstrated how his body would be brutally crushed his blood poured out as a living sacrifice for the healing and redemption of the human race. Listen to Luke's account of the first communion service around the table in the upper room. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this, divide it among you, for I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Let us now share in this bread of life, drink of this sacrifice, as a sign of our bonds of peace, love, and grace, joining in the feast of heaven around the table of the King.
Jesus was no more human than when he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane, wrestling with his own will and God's. It was a familiar spot, one would be easy for Judas to find, for Jesus and his followers prayed there often, but never had he prayed so intensely, weighing the cost of obeying God and preparing himself for the suffering that lay ahead. He was mindful of the prophet Isaiah's words, written centuries before this night of anguish. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. He knew the road to Calvary first public humiliation, then violent, bloody torture, and finally a slow, agonizing death by crucifixion, loomed in him but a few short hours. After a long and hairy night of being paraded before King Herod, the pro-Roman ruler of Israel, and Pontius Pilate, the governor of the Roman-controlled Judea, Jesus was sentenced to death before an unruly mob of religious leaders and local citizens of Jerusalem. Call it what you will, lash, scourge, hip, whip, tipped with its sharp bundle of spikes and rocks, it gouged out bits of flesh until his blood ran fresh as a river, cursing the length of his limbs. Thirty-nine strokes and then some, no one cared to count. From the palace of Caiaphas to the quarters of Pilate, beating Jesus became the pastime of the passion. Guards and soldiers eagerly moved, took turns leaving handprints on his cheek. Pounding him with rods while he grew weak, and for good measure, spitting in his face. Yet none could erase that look of pity or shout down the sound of his persistent prayer. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do.
him, wrenched from the permitting lying lips, leather lash, holy men flinging fistfuls of anger, sharp as the spikes, that split his sweet muscles, spoiled his smooth skin. I had gladly laid him unblemished, unbroken on the altar, had you asked. He gave me some way in his beginning, why not his end? Look at him, I could never kiss away half those bruises. His countless wounds would die all my claws crimson. Besides, these human hands hold no healing. Maybe it's best if I go with John now, if I say goodbye and let my son fly. At dawn on Sunday, with the Sabbath wear behind them, Several of Jesus' followers went to the tomb to finish preparing his body for burial. Mary Magdalene was among them. When she found his missing body, she distraught for while Jesus had spoken of his death and resurrection, who could honestly conceive it? Certainly not Mary, who met the risen Christ that day and mistook him for the garden. John alone stood witness when the weighty stone was heaved aside. Then came Mary Magdalene, crept in, stumbled out again. Her stare was vacant as the grave. Her loved and one missing, no, one, no wonder tears flooded the backs of her eyes. Why do you weep, child? A stranger whispered, the garden, she thought. She struggled for air, wove her worry into words. Sir. Tell me if you know where they have laid him. He wrinkled his throne pierced brood and sighed. Dearest Mary, she knew that voice, those eyes. Master, is it you?
Thank you, Father, for this glorious Easter morning. He lives. Christ is risen from the dead. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Where, O oh, grave, is your victory? He lives. Christ is risen from the dead. Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He lives. Christ is risen from the dead. As our choir and our uh, speakers and narrators come down, we're going to prepare for uh, the Lord's Supper. As we, we mentioned it a few moments ago in one of the songs that we sang, but this morning as we celebrate uh, communion, this is the beginning of, with today being Palm Sunday, uh, today is the uh, beginning of the Holy Week. And as we uh, begin the, uh, the lead up to Easter next Sunday, uh, today is a fitting day for us uh, to be able to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And so I'm going to ask our uh, deacons, if they would, to come forward for us to uh, help uh, celebrate uh, the Lord's Supper this morning. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we find Paul's teaching to the church in Corinth about uh, the Lord's Supper. And this is what he said. He says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 
For us, we get to celebrate the Lord's Supper, and uh, I always uh, intend to point out that our celebration of the Lord's Supper is twofold. There's two dynamics that go on with us participating in the Lord's Supper, and the first is that we remember the sacrifice that Christ gave for us, him giving his life so that we could have the forgiveness of our sins. He literally gave his body and his blood for us so that we could have our sins forgiven. So that is one aspect of what uh, communion or the Lord's Supper means for us. The other is that we, instead of looking backwards, we look forward. We look to the future, to the day where we get to celebrate the Lord's Supper with Christ in heaven if we are a believer in Christ. And so I'm going to ask Ken Hamby, if he would, to ask God's blessings on the elements. Celebrating to honor the love of what you have done for us, Lord. And Lord, we now pray that you will bless this wine and this bread as the disciples did years ago. Lord, we pray that you will continue to be with us. Lead, guide, and direct us, Lord, and wait you to have us to go. We pray these things in our gracious and holy name. Amen.
If you haven't already, go ahead and open up <coughs> your packet. As it says in the scriptures, uh, Jesus said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He also says, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. We want to thank you for being here today to uh, begin the preparations for Easter as we celebrate together today for Palm Sunday uh, with the uh, choir leading us in worship. Let's give them another round of applause for the great job they did helping to lead us in worship this morning. I want to remind you, uh, this evening we'll be uh, having our uh, evening service at 6 o'clock, and we'll be in our uh, study of the book of Genesis. So I hope that you'll be here with us this evening. And Wednesday night we will uh, be back into our uh, study of the book of Ephesians. And so I hope that you'll join us at 7 o'clock and bring your kids out for uh, the, the kids and the youth classes uh, during both of those services. And so I want to remind you uh, after the service, if you're interested in uh, getting some more barbecue before, uh, uh, from the barbecue yesterday, uh, be sure to stop by the Family Life Center on your way out, and there'll be uh, volunteers over there to help you. Again, thank you to everybody who helped with the barbecue yesterday. Uh, you know, that is not something that, that goes off uh, very easily. It, takes, it requires a lot of help. And so thank you to everyone who helped, whether you were serving or taking tickets or, or cooking. We really appreciate all the hard work that goes to help support the, uh, the ministries that are here at the church that are uh, ministered or, or minister to our community and are supported through that barbecue. And so thank you very much for that. And so uh, with that being said, I'm going to ask uh, Keith Lale, if he would, to close us with a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. <clears throat> 